I should use this, but when I use this equation, yeah, I get 9.6 and match to them, right? In the exam, if you use the top equation, that's okay. So when we know C, C to C length is based on the length, and that length comes from a table, depending on what we want to use. So now we should not wonder, hey look, we have some separator is 36 inches, 36 inches with 10 by, by 10 feet by 15 feet, which one do you use? So we do full calculation. Good? All right. More question for me? How do we do that for horizontal separator? This one is vertical, right? For horizontal separator, we have another equation. You remember that? L multiplied by D or something? For gas equation. We do something similar to this, but the equation that we use will be that equation instead. Oh, that equation has L effective. So L effective comes from seam to seam length, do some calculation and get that L effective. So we select a certain size of the separator from the table and find out which side work. All right? So we, we can check right away. Maybe when we use one equation, for vertical separator, we can tell right away which separator doesn't work. Anything that below 22, right? This one doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. So the rest could be fine, but it may be too much. Okay. And then we have to consider the liquid complexity. Uh, JMT, we start that? Okay. No more question, right? Let's move on. To, of course, if you have homework, try to have homework. Uh, JMT have homework about this, but change the number, okay? Sometimes you give them six hours of homework, maybe just three hours of homework. Okay. Is that good enough, three hours of homework? Too much. Too much? Too much. Two hours of homework? Too much. One. Too much? One? <laughs> I, 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 will, I will talk to Mr. Bula a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> the exam is, is not like homework. You know that homework is just due completion. When you do it, you get 10. If you don't do it, you don't get 10, just that. <laughs> exam doesn't look like that. Exam, if you do it right, you get 100. If you do it almost right, maybe 90 or 80 or 60, depending on how easy it is, okay? All right, let's talk about emulsion. Uh, there are several types of emulsion. It can be oil in water, water in oil, oil in water in oil, water in oil in water, I mean, uh, simple thing that has water particle, okay, water particle embedded in oil phase, and that oil phase stay in water. It can be like that, okay, like three layer, two layer. Most common one we may have if we produce mostly oil, we will have we may have water and oil emulsion. If we produce mostly water, we may have oil in water emulsion. Okay. Do we produce oil in water and water or water water and oil? Or it can be anything. Depends on where you are. So if we do water flooding, then we have a lot of water. Alright. Uh, we have this kind of emulsion because there are some emulsifier. Emulsifier create emulsion. That emulsifier can be there naturally already. Okay, we may have that because we have paraffin. Paraffin can help to form emulsion. Wax particle, sand particle, okay. Uh, emulsifier agent. Uh, we may have asphaltine, resin, organic acid, we may have drilling fluid, some chemical that we want to inject to prevent some other problem. Okay, let's put uh, paraffin inhibitor in. Okay, let's put asphalt inhibitor in. Maybe it creates emulsion, we have to check everything. Right? Corrosion inhibitor, scale inhibitor, 
any chemical that we put in, they cause that. Or some very small solid particle, like sand, clay particle, those things can do that. If you have pump, choke, wow, any any restriction can cause emulsion because at the restriction, the velocity is so fast, it's high. It has more degree of turbulence and it makes more. When it makes more, it creates emulsion. What we do is we use what equipment, okay? After you, what's your name, sir? After uh, Jose and Alec. If you have emulsion, what do we do? How do we treat it? With heat. With heat or treater, maybe. Okay. Do we just use heat or treater? In some case, we may just use heat or treater. But if we produce some, some gas and some water, you remember in the field trip, we have what we call separator first to separate most gas, and then it go to free water knock out to knock out any water as much as possible before that oil goes to heat the filter. Uh, okay, at the back. What's your name, Stephanie? Okay. Why do we have to remove water before it goes to heat the filter? What's his name? What's your name, sir? Rada. Rada. Why do you have to remove water before we go to heat the treater? Because the heater treater has to have a certain amount of water in the bottom section. Yeah, of course. Heat the treater needs some amount of water in the bottom section. But why do we knock water out? Why do we need free water knock out? Some cases we don't need it, but some cases we need. Dirk, what's your answer? <coughs> yes, that helps too. Okay. Something that can separate by just gravity is inexpensive, a sheep. Okay. We don't want to heat water if we don't need to. Okay. Of course, if we separate this out, we may have slower flow rate that go to heat the treater. That helps with the retention time, right? And it's also helped to not let us heat something that we don't need to heat. Heat capacity of water is about double of oil. Okay, it requires more heat to get the same temperature up. So we try to not heat water. But we need some amount of water in the in, in the filter. Okay, before that, let's take a look at emulsion viscosity. This equation. Yes, please, please write it down. It's very easy. Mixture viscosity is oil viscosity multiplied by 1 minus water cut, percent water cut divided by 100. So this becomes a fraction of everything to the power of 2.5, minus 2.5. This equation is for the case where oil is the continental space and we have small droplet of water in there. This equation suggests that. Viscosity, you look at the water cut. When we have 0% water, we have some viscosity. When we add water, water has less viscosity than oil. Okay. But we, when we add water in, viscosity goes up. Good? Not quite good. We don't want emulsion to form. And in the real crude oil, it has wax particle, as well it has all those inhibitors. It tends to form emulsion. So when we have water in, viscosity go up. That equation will help us to predict the mixture of viscosity. Okay? To remove it, <coughs> oh, we can do the test. BS and W test. This is method. Have a put oil in 50 cc, add taurine on the top, then send it to it. Then we will find out how much is sediment, how much is water, how much is crude oil plus total So this way they can tell how much is percent BS and W. Good? Okay, what, what about this total in? Okay, next to Stephanie, what's your name, sir? Stephanie. David, do you like total in? 
Is that is that good? Do you smell it sometimes? But you don't do that. No. Is that causing cancer? Yeah. In California. <laughs> not not just in California, also here too. So wear gloves if you have to handle it. It's not that dangerous. Use film moons if you can, or try to not smell it. Most of the time, just doing film moon with gloves, it should be fine. Okay. The modifying agent, uh, kind of surfactant. If you add soap in it, it form, it reduces the surface tension and it's easier to form emulsion. Okay. So emulsifier, it reduces the interference tension. Okay. Reduce the amount of mechanical work required to make a dispersed phase. Or uh, <coughs> decrease the rate of coalescence or something. That is about the chemical of uh, emulsion. So emulsion may happen already. If we add salt into it, what's going to happen? Is it going to be less emulsion or more emulsion? More stable emulsion or less stable emulsion? Oh, we do the test, I think. We do the test. Okay. Different intensity between water and oil phase. Okay. L less difference in the density. Delta rho small make emulsion to be stable. Okay. Size of water particle. If water droplet is small, it forms stable emulsion. Viscosity, high viscosity of the continuous phase cause stable emulsion. Okay. Lower interfacial tension cause stable emulsion. Okay. Water salinity, less salt in it, is less stable. More salt is not quite stable. This impact of different intensity, viscosity on emulsion stability you got to know it. Maybe not all, but maybe half of it. Okay? So that if there's a feeling of blank question, you can feel it. The increase in viscosity of the continuous phase increase the emotion stability, true or false. Those kind of questions you need to know it. Good? Alright, how do you do the test? There's an auto test. Add oil, add water, okay? Stir it with a mixer. Time equal to zero second. Take one picture. Time equal to one minute. Take another picture. Or maybe do the reading. Time equal to five minutes. Do another reading. Time equal to fifteen minutes. Do another reading. Time equal to thirty minutes. Do another reading. Okay. Then we have water percent water separated versus time. Okay. Let's say we have just one type of oil, but we have three of four candidates, three candidates of uh, demulsifier, the chemical. Okay. We tell the chemical company want to sell me this chemical. This is very good. What they say, do the test and show me the proof. Okay. They go back, do the test, they say, hey look, if I don't have any chemical, they do this line. Add chemical, it fa separate faster, for example. So that's that's kind of one proof, all right? So this is how they do bottom test to do the selection of emulsifier. Your job is to be able to describe how this test is done verbally, quickly when you write. Alright, that's one way of using chemical or emulsifier. Another way is to use heater treater. What we got to understand is that lower viscosity is good in terms of terminal velocity, based on terminal velocity equation, right? Low viscosity is fall fast. The separation occur due to the difference in the specific gravity. And it's not always that this gap <coughs> go up. Okay. Delta S T, look at this, crude A, delta H T go up. When there's a more different in the density, it separates fast, right? Between oil and water. Crude B, delta ST kind of go up, crude C is going down. Okay. 
All right, this is a different in the specific gravity. All right, here comes a trick question. Trick question. Who can handle this? Okay, next to what's your name? Gary. David. Yes. Okay, next to you, what's your name? Braxton. Braxton. Let's say at this point and that point, we have the same delta S T. See that point and that point. We have the same delta S T. Does it help to create to heat crude C? For separate on water, for instance. Help or doesn't help? Why? Okay, what was your name? What's your name? Can you do this? No, no. Uh, no, he, he, he. I don't remember you. I don't remember your name. My name is Zach. Zach? Does it help? No, I'm getting closer in density. So let's say if the ST is the same. Delta S T different intensity is the same. Heating it will help the separation or not helping the separation. <coughs> Zach. If they start as the same, heating it would help. Oh. So if if it stays the same, it would help. <laughs> I don't know what you're asking. <laughs> so confused. I'm sorry. Delta S T at that point equal to 0.05. Okay. Delta S T at that point also 0.05. It didn't help at all. Heating, emulsion, does it help in the separation? No. no. Who 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 want to do like that? Yeah, very good, very good. It's wrong. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Heating, even if even if delta S T stay at 0.05. Both players have that the SD stay the same, but viscosity go down. Viscosity of continuous phase. Or viscosity as a function of temperature. So if we have temperature, okay, temperature, I'm sorry, temperature and viscosity decrease the velocity uh, I and mean temperature, viscosity go up very quick. So increase the temperature, heat it up. Viscosity go down exponentially. Okay. So when we have the same delta S T, heat it up, reduce viscosity of the continuous phase, probably oil. Oil viscosity go down. Right. You agree? Oil viscosity go down is like lighter. Let me repeat myself. Increase the temperature, make oil thinner, or milk oil go down. When viscosity of oil go down, small water droplet in that get separation easier. You like it? You like it. All right. So when we have the same delta S T, heat it, it helps. But if we make delta S T go to zero, this means it won't separate, even though this costing is none. Okay, it won't separate. We should not face that situation. You know, in how high do we want to hit it? We don't want to do 200F. Okay. We want to do like 190, 180. So it should be fine. So what I'm saying is, it has to effect in this thing. Number one, change delta ST which we may not be able to predict. Number two, change in the viscosity of the continuous phase, which we know for sure that viscosity of the continuous phase go down exponentially, even though we don't have the lab result. Okay? Viscosity go down and it's a bit easier. That's how the uh, data treater work. Okay, loss of light end, sometimes there's a concern. Okay? What is the temperature that we want to heat it? We want to heat it just enough for the separation to happen and just enough to meet the requirement for transportation. Requirement for transportation is about read vapor pressure. Read vapor pressure is the pressure of gas phase when we heat it up to 100 Fahrenheit. Okay, we need to make sure that read vapor pressure is lower than the requirement. Uh, 
Let's read the information. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Bank of Lake, Texas, Intermediate. Not Texas, with Oklahoma, blah, 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 blah. Shall have, okay, this is a read vapor pressure requirement. Shall have the read vapor pressure less than 9.5 psi at 100 F as per this ASTM. Okay, what does it mean? This means, okay, they take the sample conceptually, okay, put oil in there. No heating or anything, put the pressure gate over there. Read the pressure. Nothing happened yet. Increase the temperature to 100 Fahrenheit. This pressure gauge starts to read more pressure. That pressure from the gas phase must be less than 9.5 psi. If it is more than 9.5 psi, they don't buy it. So this read vapor pressure thing probably is there. Sell contract, when we want to sell it, okay? So sometimes, people try to use a heater treater to heat it up, to lose some light in, so it removes the gas that dissolves in oil phase. When those gas that dissolve in oil phase coming out, oil becomes like kind of denser, and we can make this specification of real vapor pressure. Question for me. Am I clear enough? Good? <coughs> you understand it? Really? Don't write, I don't understand anything in this con no idea. Okay, because you said you understand. That's about real vapor pressure. Another concern is if we heat it too hot. Okay? In the heater trader, I have this much oil. If I put it too hot, the amount of oil go down, like it vaporizes, part of it vaporizes. If we do that too much, not good, because we have less oil to sell. Okay? We want to just meet the same requirement of big vapor pressure. This chart tells the temperature in degree Fahrenheit and percent loss by volume. How much percent that loss by volume if we heat to 100 F. Or if we heat to 100 F, we lost about less than 1%. 150, maybe we lost like 1.8% or something. So this tells us how much oil you're gonna lose. Do we like it? Maybe not. Because we sell oil by volume. Right? So if I one barrel, I can sell $40. If I have less oil by 1%, my paycheck gets less by 1%. That's matter, right? But they don't want to buy oil that's just full of gas. So that's why there's this rule in addition to that. So we just want to hit just enough that we meet the requirement of that, that 9.5 at 100 F. Okay? There are also some other standards, like different pipeline. So this is Keystone pipeline, okay? They use true vapor pressure of 10 psi a, okay? TVP or true vapor pressure also defined at 100 F, and it's used different or more accurate method to do the measurement. So basically, I didn't talk about how to measure it, right? I just talked about the concept. There are two ways of, two ASCM to do the measurement. So in Canada, they want, uh, maybe, we can have a little bit more gas, because it's cold or something. Good? Right, let's talk about heater treatment. Oh, this doesn't have color. Okay, like what you have seen in the field trip, at the inlet, oil water mixture that have a little bit of gas dissolved, go and hit. What's that? What's your name? Behind Zach? Colton. Colton. It hit what? They let that water. Then gas fed, thank you. Gas fed come out. Okay, emulsion over here fall down to this pipe, the down cumber. It go down over here is like emulsion with water. So this is heating element, then it go up. Okay. 
it do the separation over here. This is the interface between the motion and oil. So that line is between the motion and oil. All right, oil coming out this way. Water go out from the bottom, go up, go to the adjustable gear, and then it go down. Sometimes we have hole on it. Sometimes it's like spill. It go up from the inner pipe and spill out. Inside there's a piping pipe. The inner pipe tight fit. Then we have some kind of uh, gasket for the ceiling with the outer pipe. So water come from over there and spill out like in the picture. That's how it works. The way that it works is just heat to reduce viscosity. When the viscosity goes down, it helps it increase settling velocity of water droplet in oil and oil droplet in water. Clear enough? Okay, now is the location of mist extractor. You see that? Mist extractor is over here. And over there, they put a relief valve. Three, four years ago, I delete that work and asked you to put it in. What are those work? And have the choice for you to select. That can be something that makes sense. I have this, this picture, so where else can I take it from? It can be horizontal heater treater. Operate the same way. Okay. We have emulsion coming in. Okay, this is emulsion. It let go in here and have heating element. Emulsion come out hot. When it's hot, it has health separation. Oil go to the top, water go to the bottom, and we may have some gas. Good? <coughs> yes? All right. How do we know the model number? Which one to buy? We need to know how many BTU per hour? How big is this five box? How big is this separator? Okay. To know all that, we use some kind of equation. It is based on terminal velocity calculation. It's just like vertical separator calculation. Okay. For the heat requirement, the calculation is similar to line heater. We need to know the amount of heat that requires to do that heating. Okay, equation for heat is MCP to the T. If we have the if we have it flow, Q equal to W, which is uh, R per hour, multiplied by C sub P. C sub P is BTU per bar per Fahrenheit, multiplied by delta T. So this will tell us how much heat we need. Good? Oh, what do I use? Do I use C of oil or CP value of water? Which one? Which one? Which one? Yes, which one? Water. Water. Water would be a little bit conservative if you use water. We may use both. Water will come in in the emulsion. Okay. The <clears throat> here's the uh, derivation. Uh, the recommendation is we have total heat required equal to heat that used to heat oil plus heat that used to heat water plus any heat that loss to the environment. So heat that used to heat oil use specific gravity of oil, which is about 0.5. Okay. Heat that used heat to heat water use spe specific heat of water. Good? Combine them together, become total heat required. And heat loss is about 10% of total heat. Do some derivation. We come up with this equation. Okay, oh, it's already in that box. Amount of heat, BTU per hour, equal to some coefficient multiplied by delta T in Fahrenheit, multiplied by volumetric flow rate of oil. Okay, variable there, specific gravity of oil, multiplied by 0.5, plus 0.1. This is just a quick calculation under the assumption that water flow rate is about 0.1 or 10% of oil flow rate. Why, why, how can we have this assumption? 
to say again, ah, oh, how can we make this assumption? Because we use pre-modern of out, you agree? When we use pre-modern of out, we separate a lot of water out already. If we don't use pre-modern of out, we will have to lose some heat to heat water up for no reason. Okay? Alright, that's the equation. We can create a firebox rating. If we want, if we have, instead of 10%, we have something else. We use this equation. Okay? This equation is for the case where uh, heat water is not 10%. It can be any percent of water cut. So this small Q is equal to Q total multiplied by that delta T. Definition of each term, okay, this Q total is barrel per day flow rate, okay. That Q is BTU per hour, that is flow rate. Delta T is temperature difference in Fahrenheit. Temperature difference in Fahrenheit and in Röntgen, they are the same. You agree? They are exactly the same. Alright, that is a little bit difficult my thought. Save us, do this approximation based on this assumption. Then say oh, is about that much. Specific gravity and a specific gravity. Specific heat capacity is about 0.62. Okay, I don't remember the name again. Okay. Devin Hunter, no, not Hunter. Next to you. What's your name? Braxton. And what's your name? Colton. Colton. Next to Colton will be? Ron. Ron. Where does that come from? 0. 0.62. Ron. Where is 0. 0.62 coming from? Ron. Charles. Charles. Yeah, good guess. <laughs> so that's poison so is that for water or for oil? <coughs> you agree with that, Ron? Yeah. Yes. Poison so is for oil. It's a conservative way to do that approximation. When you look at the chart, hey look, CP of oil is can be anywhere. It doesn't need to be point six two. It depends on several factors, depend on API gravity. Okay? Is based on temperature too. Different temperature, I have different specific heat capacity. Different API gravity, it has different value. Oh, but if I use pi 62, pi 62 is okay, 60. It's the upper limit over there. So it will be conservative approximation. So we want to know the maximum possible amount of heat. We use maximum possible value of CP. Good? You like this? All right. That's the calculation that requires. So this calculation requires total volumetric flow rate, percent water cut, and temperature difference. And you need to know the unit that used indoors. So Q, BDU per hour, delta T is that, and flow rate is that. So this flow rate, I put just Q total. Q total means water plus oil already. If we don't use that, we can use a chart. The chart is very easy to read, except, okay, sometimes students make a mistake by not read that part. It's kind of small, but it's like readable in the exam. It said, for capacities larger than the chart range, divide the range, divide the rate by 10, use this on the chart, then multiply the answer by 10, and done. Good? I know that this thing made up. Sometimes, okay, this is for the amount of 10 barrel per day, 100 barrel per day, and that would be 1,000 barrel per day. What if I ask you, 2,000 barrel per day? Oh, I cannot do it. No, you can do it. If it is 2,000 barrel per day, Divided it by 10. So 2000 becomes 200. When it's 200, we go up, we get the answer, multiply the answer by 10. Done. Got it? Okay, where are this line? First, we go up and stop at percent of emulsion, percent of water in emulsion. I zoom in over here on the top is 100% water, 80% water. So we need to know how much water in emulsion. Then we turn left until we meet this line. 
Temperature rise requirement. 10F, 20F, something, something, something. How do we know that temperature rise? Next to wrong, what's your name, sir? Israel. Israel. How do you know the temperature rise? What information do you need to know the temperature rise? For red, what about temperature that is in the free water not out? Is that going to help? So we have ambient temperature. So this temperature rise is whatever coming out from the free water not out. Let's say it's coming out at um, 60, a little bit cold, 60. Our operating temperature is 120. So the difference will be 60. That is the required temperature rise. Then you go with this one. But how do we know that we have to heat it until 120? We use another chart. There's another chart. Another chart. This chart says, OK, actual, uh, this is a downflow model for a heater filter. So it depends on, we have low emulsion, moderate emulsion, or tight emulsion. It depends on treated temperature. So different treated temperature will be size different shape. Okay. It's just using the chart. Okay. We already covered the map and the chart. And it's 12, 19. Uh, any, anything else that you want to ask? Like what's in the exam? Do we have quiz or anything? Do we truly have quiz next time? No? Okay. If you have any questions about the field trip, come ask me. Uh, otherwise, expect the homework to come this Thursday and field trip. Thank you for coming. Bye bye.